Well, as I said yesterday when I did the devotion on prayer, I was I didn't really want to stop doing a devotion on prayer, and uh, but I wasn't quite sure where I was going next. And anyway, I was speaking with Heather uh, actually, and she mentioned, "Well, why don't you do a something about praying together?" And that uh, certainly caused a light bulb to go on. So thanks to Heather, you're going to get another devotion on prayer. And this one uh, is found in the verse I want to look at is found in Matthew chapter 18. And in Matthew chapter 18, we have a statement that says, Again, I say to you, Matthew 18, 19, that if two or you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask it will be done for them by my father in heaven for two for where two or three are gathered together in my name I am there in the midst of them Heavenly Father we pray that you will meet us here and we will be blessed for your glory Lord we ask that we would experience your presence and that, Lord, you would teach us to pray and show us ways in which we can uh, grow in our prayer life, in our understanding of you, Lord, and our relationship with you. We pray for those who have not yet trusted in the Lord, who are maybe skeptical or on the outside looking in. And I ask, O oh God, that they would open their hearts to you today and receive you and discover the wonder of being in a living relationship with God. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. This passage of scripture that's in Matthew chapter 18, its primary um, context has to do with actually a disciplined situation with a sinning brother or sister in the Lord. And uh, in verse 18 it says, I say to whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And this was uh, the uh, in the area of actually disciplining someone who refuses to repent in the local church. And that what it actually says is God recognizes the gathering of God's people here and will cooperate with it and agree with it. And uh, that's these are strong words here. But there's something more that we can discover from this because he goes on to the subject of prayer. It's, he says in 19, again, I say to you, if two or a few agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. This is another incredible um, statement here, but we also have to understand that this is, as we've already talked about, Holy Spirit directed praying. And that there's a place where we can pray together and discover uh, the strength of God in that. And the next phrase says something, uh, takes us a little deeper in the understanding of this. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there it is, my name. Again, under my authority, under my direction, I am there in the midst of them. Now, if you're a Christian we understand that God is already within us. The Spirit of the Living God is already in the Christian. So what does it mean when he says, when we are gathered in his name, and this is in the context of praying, he says, I am there in the midst of them. What it tells us is that there is a special blessing that comes from being together, and praying together. We were not meant to be islands. We were not meant to be off on our own. We know that COVID-19 has been a stretch for many of us. We long to be able to be together in fellowship, to see one another, to converse with one another. We are very thankful for the technology that enables us to communicate in so many ways in these days. And that's a blessing. But uh, previous to the COVID-19 experience, there have been Christians who didn't think it was necessary to be together. They thought, well, I can get my church on the internet and uh, just watch it there, and uh, um, that's my church. 
And I would say to them, if you have opportunity to be gathered together in the name of Jesus Christ, then you should be doing it. And not doing it is, is, is uh, not good. Under necessity, we meet in the way that we do right now. But when the opportunity is there to be in fellowship, that's where we should be. Because you're getting it a one-sided experience. I'm the preacher. And I, I appreciate the comments and the feedback that you do give to me. It's helpful and encouraging. But I long to see you face to face. And I long to bless you and to be near to you and to encourage you and to, to share with you and for you to share with me and for us to share with one another. We don't have as much of that experience in this online context. And it's the same for praying together. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote many letters, but you'll find as he wrote those letters, often he expressed his great and deep desire to be with them. Well, these uh, internet uh, sharings, Sunday services, the daily devotions, these are the new medium today. It's not letters, but it is Facebook and YouTube and, and, and thank God for this medium that we do have. I, I don't know if I could write what I've been expressing to you that I could write that down in letters to you. But it's just the new medium. But it didn't stop Paul from longing to be with them. To be near to them. To see them face to face. And it doesn't stop me from having that same longing in my heart and soul. And so there's value in being together. But there's also value in praying together. And there's a special promise that we have here when two or three are gathered together in my name. That we can gather with other believers and when we do and when we are gathered in his name which tells us that it's not just gathering to have a meal it's not gathering to play golf it's not just gathering to watch a hockey game or a movie or a show but it's gathering together specifically in the name of Jesus Christ and that means that that is the focus of the gathering that now that doesn't mean we shouldn't gather together and all the more as we see the day approaching the, the day of the end but in the meantime, we ought to be a people that look for opportunities for us to gather together, to pray together, to be in fellowship together. But this idea of praying together is also a wonderful, wonderful thing to be doing. Now, we know that Jesus spoke about uh, praying publicly and praying in the closet. And he, he encouraged us not to, to go out and parade with prayers. Not praying... Uh, for self-glory is what he was speaking about there and he asked us to go he said go into your closet and shut the door go along with God and make your request to him but we also discover here he talks about praying together he mentions that very uh, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask it will be done for them by my father which is in heaven so Jesus was not uh, saying no to public prayer not saying no to praying with others he was pointing out the error of praying for the wrong reasons and that was to pray publicly so other people could hear and you could be praised up for it but to pray together to agree together <clears throat> to come before the throne of God together <clears throat> is a high privilege indeed now um, in the context that we looked at there was an issue that needed to be dealt with and they needed to pray it through and they needed to seek the father on it and they needed to come to an agreement on it and that was all that God was calling them to do in that situation but he speaks about his very presence being there in that gathering and I want to tell you that it is wonderful to pray on your own and I've experienced the presence of God many times there. But I have also known what it is to be in with others in prayer and in worship. And it is a, a wonderful experience as well. 
And there's that special promise that he says, I will come and I will be there. I'll be in your midst. And there's this sense there that, not that he isn't in each believer, but now there's the sense of us being bound together in Christ. You see, we individuals, as I did a study, and if you haven't uh, gotten to that one, go to YouTube, look, look up uh, Pierre Chesson, and you can go through all the truths for you. Just press videos, and then and you can look through all the videos. You'll find one where it speaks of us being temples to the living God. And we individually are temples to the living God. But also, corporately, we become a temple to the living God. Which means this becomes a place where God sets his name and his place when Christians are gathered together in one place that we become together a temple to the living God. Peter writes that the whole of the church of God is a temple to the living God. But God has called us as individuals to be temples. He has called us as local temples churches where we are gathered together to be temples to the living God and then he's called the entire church to be a temple to God now when we gather together in this fashion and we meet together as temples to the Lord then it is the house of prayer we be, it becomes the house of prayer and Jesus says I'll be there I'll be in your midst he makes it a special promise and I've known what it is to gather with one person, two per people, three people. It just says two or three. It doesn't say there has to be 50 or 100. And so the promise here is if I come together with another believer, even one more believer, that there's a special promise of the presence of God. And what does that mean? It means something marvelous, that God will meet you in a fresh way in prayer when you gather to pray with others so if that's true then we should be looking for those opportunities to be in prayer with other believers looking for an opportunity to spend time in the presence of God with someone else and my friend there's a great blessing there I can tell you that I have probably grown more in praying with others than I have praying on my own and I, that's just the truth of it because God then uses the other person or the other people in my life and causes interaction to take place. And the Lord speaks through them, bringing a scripture to mind, and then speaks through me. And, and there's, a, there's a fluidity and there's a sense of the very presence of God working in the midst of that prayer time. So what can I tell you? Look for opportunities to pray with others. When you speak to a fellow believer, if you're a Christian, then let me encourage you, you should not just speak to them, you should take time to pray together. You get on the phone with someone, does it cost that much time and energy to say, well, let's pray together. Let's speak to God together. And, I, you know, often I have prayed with people on the phone all the time. Most of the time I ask them, unless I feel that they're very uncomfortable and only learning to, to pray, uh, would you pray as well? I need to hear other people's prayers. I want to hear other people praying. It delights me to enter into their prayers. You see, my perspective is from where I'm at, and their perspective is from where they're at. And they will introduce me to whole new things to be praying for and whole new ways to be praising God and worshiping Him. So we, we need one another, and we need to be in fellowship with one another, meeting with one another in prayer. It's limited under our circumstances, yes, but there are ways around those limitations. You can get on the phone and pray with someone, and they can pray with you. You can have prayer meetings on the telephone with people. You can have a, experience great blessing in those circumstances. You know, when the church gathered together to pray in the book of Acts chapter 4, and this was after uh, Peter and John had been persecuted. It tells us in Acts chapter 4, And being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all the chief priests and elders had said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice to God with one accord. Now, it says they raised their voice to God with one accord. 
are in unity together. That doesn't mean that everybody said this prayer together at the same time, but when one person was praying, everyone else was in that prayer. So when someone else is praying with you, then you're entering into their prayer, and then uh, conversely, they are entering into your prayer. So they raised their voice and said, Lord, you are God who made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David have said, why did the heathen nations rage and the people plot vain things? And the kings of the earth took their stand and the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed, both Herod and Pontius Pilate with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. It's a remarkable verse. I haven't got time to spend on it now, but we can see that God's hand and purpose was at work in spite of the wickedness of the practices of the people. Now, Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that with all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. They experienced God in praying in a group. I want you to do the same. I want you to know what it is to experience God praying on your own, but also to experience God in praying with others. Don't miss this. It, it is such a blessing and so wonderful to be spending time in prayer and for looking for places to pray. And, and, and when you meet a fellow Christian, pray with them. Pray with them. Even at the grocery store, I've prayed with people. A dear friend, Robin Lapointe, who uh, lived among us for a number of years, and he's now in Quebec. And Robin uh, became used to us just praying, like spending time and praying together. And not just, you know, a few words here and there. And he actually went to visit a pastor after he left here. And they had a conversation. And Robin said, well, we should pray. And the pastor said, sure. So he said a few words. And he, then he was done. And, and, and Robin said, well, I want to pray with you. Oh, oh, well, okay. Sometimes we have left it up to the pastor to be praying. Oh, my goodness. We are not holier than thou. <laughs> we need your prayers. We need to be praying together. And I know that one of the fears that many people have is, I don't know how to pray well. I don't know what to say. And uh, we can end up making that a tremendous stumbling block, especially in praying out loud with us. When we're on our own, well, we can silently pray to God, or we might even verbally pray, but nobody's hearing us. But I want to say something that, it's possible for us to be as vain as the person who is proudly praying out loud so others would hear them when we are saying, I will not pray with others because I'm afraid of what they'll think of my prayers. Both are vain and both are self-centered just in a different way. So let me encourage you to take steps in public prayer, to look for opportunities to pray with others. My friend, God is looking at the heart. I have prayed with people who have stuttered and stammered, and they have blessed my soul so much, more than my prayers. I have been so blessed. And I want to encourage you that you can be a person of prayer. You can be a person who is a blessing to others by your praying. It doesn't have to be flowered words and polished statements. It's just prayer from the heart, because prayer is communicating with God. But I will say this, as you grow in comfort and continually learn to be praying without ceasing in your heart, on your own, then you will find it easier to be praying with others. Oh, friends, there's a blessing in praying together, in being together. Have you not uh, experienced at times being in a crowd? Oh, I want to tell another story of what Robin he had gone to a Walmart and he met up with a fellow Christian that he had known before he had come to this area. And uh, they had a little visit and uh, in, the, in the hallway and Robin said, well, we should pray. 
So Robin bowed his head to pray. There he was in Walmart praying with this other person, and he prayed for eh, maybe a considerable little while. And when he opened his eyes and looked around, his friend was gone. <laughs> Whether he didn't want to be embarrassed to be seen praying in public, I don't know. But he said he looked around and he realized <laughs> the guy left. So, uh, so it's it's probably something that we are, are there. People are not used to. But we can begin to cultivate this idea of praying with others. So the next time you're on the phone with someone, why don't you say, why don't we pray together? Why don't we talk to God together? It doesn't have to be long. But there's a blessing there. Don't miss it. Look for those opportunities to pray together. Maybe we can't be together physically, but we can certainly pray together on the telephone or through Zoom or whatever it might be. So gather together and pray and be found with one another. You know that in uh, Revelations chapter 7 at the end of the age when things are all wrapped up and we discover this wonderful uh, gathering together of the saints of God, they're not often as individuals. They are gloriously being together and praying together. And we find... Uh, this great a great multitude, for example. And I get it here. There we go. It says here, after these things I looked, and behold a great multitude which no man could number, of all the nations and the tribes and the peoples and the tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes, with palm branches in their hands, and crying out with a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round the throne, and the elders and the four living creatures, and fell on their faces before the throne, and worshipped God, saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Group praying. Group praying. Have you ever been in a gathering of thousands of Christians? Maybe it was for a Christian concert, which often should be worship. There's, a, there's an experience of multitudes of God's people being together and praying together that you don't want to miss. So look for those opportunities. So my friend, what can I say? Let me encourage you. Pray. Pray on your own, but pray with others. Cultivate this. Begin to take steps in that direction. There may be very weak prayers to start with. Maybe just a few words. Uh, but that's okay. You'll be blessed, and whoever you're praying with will be blessed. The next time you're on the phone with a fellow believer, pray with them. Now I'm going to take this a little step further in terms of actually praying with others as well. People who don't know the Lord. I have often found myself in circumstances where I have, I, I've shared as much as I can with a person, and they may be struggling, they may be working things through, and what I say to them, well, come with me. Let's go before God with this. And what I do is I invite them to come into the presence of God with me. Lost people, come with me into the presence of God. And it can be very powerful times and often answers can come right from there, straight from heaven. And as well with other believers, we're saying, let's come together before the throne of God. Isn't that beautiful? Let's come together before the very throne of God. Can I encourage you with all my heart and soul to look for opportunities to pray with others? And we have a great promises that are there as well. And that is that he will accomplish that which we ask if we agree together. And of course it is in the name of Jesus Christ, as every prayer must be. And knowing what I've already taught of that, you understand that it's not tacking his name on as a lucky charm or talisman but it is in the will and in the way of Almighty God. Let me encourage you to go there. This wonderful opportunity of gathering together with the people of God. And when the coronavirus lifts and we're able to be together again, be together again. Gather with God's people and experience the wonderful blessing of corporate prayer. I ask for that for you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
So here's a little song. It's called As We Gather. May your spirit work within us. Yes, Lord. As much as possible, give us opportunities to be gathered with others in praying. As we gather, may your spirit work within us. As we gather, may we glorify your name. Knowing well that as our hearts begin to worship, we'll be blessed. called us by your spirit into worship in this temple you have set our hearts aflame as we lay our hearts upon your holy altar we'll be blessed one opportunity to pray with someone. As a matter of fact, what I really did mean to mention during this devotion was uh, pray with those in your own household. How many husbands and wives never pray together? Start there. Start with your children. They need to hear you praying. And not just giving thanks at the meal, which should happen, but more than that. Look for, create, and establish opportunities to pray together. And there'll be a blessing there. The very presence of God will come in a special way. That's what he's promised. God bless.